Hi, my name is Grace Kemp, and this is a short talk on the prayer of Jesus recorded in John chapter 17. There is a movement uh, afoot today called the ecumenical movement, which seeks to unite all Christians into one large church uh, under the auspices of the Vatican or the Roman Catholic Church uh, headquartered in Rome. Um, their reason uh, for this uh, unity of, of all Christians, in quotes, uh, is, among other things, uh, based on John 17, where Christ four times prayed to the Father, asking that they, meaning the believers, all be one. So that pra uh, phrase was lifted out of context. Uh, the fact is that long before Christ prayed the prayer in, in uh, John 17, he said in John 14, 16, that he will pray to the Father, he will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. That means someone who will replace Christ to the believers after Christ is bodily removed to heaven. Uh, he will abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth. He dwells with you, and he shall be in you. The Comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send. In other words, Jesus announced that he would pray to the Father to send the Holy Spirit to indwell believers. He says the Holy Spirit is with you, but he's not in you. Uh, throughout the Bible, right up into the time of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and went. He was external to the believers. From Pentecost on, he indwells physically the believers, the bodies, are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says. Uh, John 17 is when he actually did exactly what he said he would do. He prayed to the Father, and he was concerned. He said, I've sent them into the world, and the world hates them. Who will keep them when he is gone? Uh, he was concerned. Now, if it was a job for humans to do, he would simply have instructed his disciples how they can get together and remain uh, un united. He didn't do that. It was a bigger job than a human could handle. He prayed to the Father to send the Holy Spirit to unite the believers. And did the Father answer his prayer? Well, he certainly did, because Acts 32 and 33 says, Jesus, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. In other words, Jesus ascended to heaven, 50 days after, uh, 40 days after the resurrection, 10 days later, he sent the Holy Spirit. And Peter testifies that Jesus' prayer is now answered because the Holy Spirit is descended, the, the believers are indwelt with the Spirit, and they are united in the most uh, supernatural way. Uh, and that continues today. The Holy Spirit is a unifying force that holds all the believers all over the world together. They are the one body of Christ. They are the one true world church. They are the, um, the bride of Christ and the household of faith. If you meet a, a believer uh, around the world, uh, there is a connection because that person and you are dwelt with the same Holy Spirit. It's, he's the unifier of the, of the church. So the ecumenical movement is a bogus movement, a counterfeit extra-biblical movement man-made movement that competes with the Holy Spirit for control of the body of Christ. We are under the control of the body of, uh, of the Holy Spirit, uh, not an external uh, man-made movement. And so all believers are already united, and this is the great security of the believer. Um, at the time of Pentecost, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond or free, there is neither male nor female, we are all one in Christ Jesus. Uh, Jesus uh, has uh, united us um, as his, his church and his bride. And one day, when the Holy Spirit leaves, we will leave with him at the time of the rapture. And so, God bless us all and uh, help us to keep the unity of the body of Christ. Thank you. God bless you.